Morning guys, Scott with Flip and Customize, and today we're gonna do a real quick uh, nitty gritty video on an outer and an inner tie rod on this 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, tools you're gonna need, you don't need a lift, we have one, obviously it makes it easier to do. Um, as far as the outer tie rod goes, there's really nothing you need for specialty tools. The inner tie rod, you are gonna need a specialty tool. So you're either gonna have to rent it, borrow it, buy it, whatever you wanna do. I'll show you that when we get to it. Um, but let's start with, it's up in the air, the Jeep's up in the air. I'm gonna pop the tire off and I'll show you the uh, outer tie rod and what we're dealing with that because that one is actually bad but the customer wants them both replaced at the same time. So let me get the wheel off. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement Everything I do so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks Isn't that spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past in the Alright guys, what are we looking at? We are looking at the left front outer tie rod end on this uh, Grand Cherokee And like I said, we were giving it a shakedown And lo and behold it's got a bad tie rod on. Pretty bad, actually. It's got up and down play in the joint itself here. Um, there's different ways you could take this apart. They have pickle forks that you could drive in here with a hammer. You can use, um, I've seen people use pry bars. Myself, I hit this with an impact, and then I smack the uh, knuckle right here with a ball peen hammer, and it works like 99% of the time. You're not driving anything in there. Not that you're keeping this anyway. Uh, but another thing you want to do is loosen up this jam nut, which I went ahead and done already and that's like an inch and a sixteenth wrench um i want to keep it just about where it's at now so i went ahead like i said and loosened this up um kept it where it's at i'm going to zip this off with the impact smack this and drop this down then we're going to get this out of the way we keep this distance so we know our or we're going to measure this distance from the end so we can reset the um the new inner tie rod into the same distance. So this alignment will be close already when this customer goes. So I'm gonna get this off of there, then we'll get into the inner, um, and that's where I'll talk about the uh, specialty tooling. All right, just to show you, loosen that up with the impact gun. You could do it with a wrench or a ratchet, but you may suffer at least with the install with the inside turning on you right here and have to put an Allen socket into that. Uh, but anyway, hit that with the impact, smack with this with the hammer, and then again, it just drops down. So we can finish taking this off. This comes out, unwind this, it's off and out of the way. All right, outer tie rod's out of the way. And this is what you got left here when you unthread it. So that's the jam nut where we left it. I like to take, take a set of dial uh, calipers here. And then, excuse me for one second, there we go. And then I go ahead and this is how I'm gonna get my depth right here. So it is right on. So I know when I set the new one, assuming the manufacturers are close in their, in their manufacturing, and then I lock it in right there so I know that when I put the new one on the jam nut right there and I lock this down, that's where I'm going to run it down to and it's going to be right on the money. Um, you can use a tape measure, you can use whatever you've got, but this is, a, I find, the most accurate way to get that um, there. Then I'll take the nut off, this little clamp off, there's another clamp on the inside. We can pop this boot off and then I'll show you the inner tie rod. As far as the outer tie rod goes, as you can see, the boot itself was ripped and this thing was dry and had literally up and down play and I can actually move it now, so definitely do. All right guys, now the boot's out of the way, you can see the inner tie rod, which is just a straight shaft with a ball and socket at the end. And in behind there, it's hard to see, but there's some hexes on the back of this. This just threads on. And the tool I'm gonna show you fits right on these hexes right here and then slides over this shaft and you just put a ratchet on the end and loosen it up and put the new one on. It's just simple as that. Take it off and run the new one on. They do make another style that's just almost like a C-clamp, almost like an exhaust clamp, and clamps on this, and you can put a ratchet on it, and that works as well. It's pretty universal, that one, actually. Um, and this one, the tool I'm showing you, it's actually got different sizes. Um, and this is the tool itself. So it's straight through like that. It slides right onto the end of the tie rod end. Like I said, you need some type of tooling to do this. This collar fits into this like so 
this slides over the end and onto that onto the flats and you turn it with a ratchet so i'm going to go ahead and do that and get this thing off so we can show you um putting the new one on but again you're going to have to rent a tool um source a tool borrow a tool whatever you got to do for the inner tie rod all right guys there it is the inner tie rod is out of the jeep and as you can see it just threads in to here um like so and you run it down and tighten it down those are the hexes that you're grabbing onto on the back side of it and you don't want to use an impact or at least i don't um not on a power steering rack it's kind of sensitive stuff in there so you don't want to mess that up it comes off with a regular ratchet they're not ridiculously tight or anything and i just use the regular half inch ratchet on my tool and it comes off no problem all right a couple more things to know is you want to uh inspect your new parts before you go ahead and install them make sure you're dealing with the same length same threads everything looks correct and this one does it does come with some grease too and you're going to pack it around here before you put your boot on you could do it before you install it i don't because it just makes a mess a little bit of thread locker on the threads and then this you see how it has a washer face um, and it's kind of a pain to do, but you can do it, um, is once it's installed on here and tightened down, you see the two slots, you can kind of peen the edge of that washer face in. So therefore it, um, it's just another holding force besides the uh, Loctite itself. So just another safety aspect as far as that goes. So we'll go ahead and thread this on, get it tightened down. You do want to torque this. Um, or snug it up good is someone's it's going to be somewhere between like 40 and 60 foot pounds Don't use an impact um, But look it up and make sure you're on the right track for the torque. So we'll throw that on All right, one thing I forgot to mention if you're uh, Go ahead and you're tightening this down or torquing it down and you need to hold this still You don't want to put a ton of force on this rack and damage anything uh, If you turn the wheel so the rack is out further you can engage the teeth here lightly with a wrench um, And kind of hold it still or a pair of channel locks out here um, just to just to keep it back so you're not damaging anything when you're torquing it down. I just wanted to mention that. All right, we got a grease pack here around the socket. We got our tabs locked down. The end of the uh, inner tie rod torqued down. We cleaned up the boot, the inside of the boot as well. Um, you can reuse these clamps if you have the tool and you were gentle with taking it off, and we do. Um, so that makes it easier. I've seen people use zip ties. I've seen people use just about anything. So whatever you got, make it work. So clean it up. Slide it back on, then we throw the uh, outer tie rod on. All right, we got our jam knot run down to our predetermined measurement we used when we marked our old tie rod end. So the new one will be installed with that jam knot exactly where it was before. Remember, we checked the overall height and the length of the tie rods, and they do match. So this is going to be very, very close. Without any alignment, he shouldn't notice anything. However, we always do recommend getting an alignment. So now we'll thread on the outer tie rod, pop it in. Tighten it down and or torque it down or zip it with an impact. There is a torque spec on it, so you should check that out. All right, on it goes. And actually, this replacement, which is a Napa, it's their higher end Napa line, uh, it's, it's actually greasable. So it comes with a grease fitting and a pop that grease fitting in there as well. So tighten that down, uh, put the jam nut on, put it in here, torque it all down, and this thing is done. All right, there we are. It is installed, inner and outer tie rod end. Everything's torqued down, tightened down, jam, jam nuts tightened down, and uh, new grease fitting is installed. And the, uh, what we also, well, obviously we greased it, but we, uh, what I like to do is I do witness marks. I don't know, it's just back to uh, racing and motocross racing and everything is when you tighten a fastener, if it's accessible to put a mark on when it's torqued down, there's a visual cue there. If uh, anything gets uh, moved, you can see that and you know if something has loosened up. So we went ahead and did that on this as well. Just another thing we do. All right guys, that's the end of this video. So we took our 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee. We did an inner and outer tie rod on the driver's side, start to finish. Not a huge deal. And the only real specialty tool you need is something to do your inner tie rod. And there's a few options available and you run down to your auto parts store and you can rent one, borrow one, barter for one, whatever you gotta do. But Thanks for watching. This is Flippin' Customized. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, it helps us grow. We appreciate each and every one of you. Occasionally, we do a giveaway. So thanks again, Flippin' Customized.